we've all been in love and love is amazing love can be wonderful love is is everything everyone wishes for we all want to be loved and we all love to love however sometimes love can turn out to be your worst nightmare in this episode i'm going to talk about seven signs that you are indeed dating the wrong person so let's get right into it welcome to random chickens number one it's when the partner your partner that you love tries to change you this is the commonest for example let's say you're this outgoing person you love to hang out with your friends you love to do all these amazing things with so many people and then suddenly your refrain you're keeping to yourself you're no longer the outgoing person that we all know that your friends your family and your you know colleagues know so you no longer hang out with people and you're not doing it because it's your new wish or it's your choice you're doing it because of the person you are dating in most cases they don't want you to hang out with people you're scared to hang out with that purpose of what his he or she is going to to say or how they're going to react or they don't like hang out with people or they don't like your family they don't like your friends they don't like your colleagues they are you know they're so uptight they follow you they are stalkers so the minute you start feeling that way about yourself just know there's a problem it's okay to wake up it's okay to have a change in your you know attitude or how you carry yourself or how you behave but that should be your choice like the choice you've started to do on your own it shouldn't be because of uh, the person you're with i don't know if that makes sense of course there are habits you can change for example if you've been the kind that gets your socks off and throws them all over the house or you leave dirty you know laundry around the house or you leave dirty plates dirty everything and then your partner talks to you about it that's a good kind of change but if they are changing who you are then there's a problem baby number two is when your partner is your harshest critic your worst critic guys criticism is good i'm not saying it's bad however it should be healthy criticism 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 yeah, yeah. that word <laughs> yeah that word so the minute you find out that the person you're dating is the one that, criti that is the one that criticizes you the most and in a rude way in a harsh way they don't have any you know feelings towards you they're telling you things like oh my god you're so daft you can't do that excuse me i'm dating you i expect you to be the person i'm running to when other people are treating me bad i don't know if that makes sense you're not supposed to you know comfort me give me if you're to criticize me do it in a healthy way you know something that's going to build me not something that's going to crush me i don't know if that makes sense and in most cases if you criticize the lot into thinking you're not worthy to do something you find yourself believing it and then in, in the long run you'll actually find yourself not developing not trying out these new things because the person you're dating doesn't believe in you so let me give you an example on that so let's say you want to try out a new project so you're telling everyone about it and people are like yeah well, you can do this that's so you oh my god you guys ignore the birds you can do it that's so you so when you get your partner to give them this info they're like no you can't you're so fake you're not good at that i see you i can see right through you you're not good at that and that's not okay it's the bad and that's that's not you you're not being classy you're not being cool you know like there's there's a way they criticize you that makes you feel like oh my god and sometimes when you're actually good sometimes you know that you're good at something but because of what the person you're with is telling you you start freaking out so when your family and friends and colleagues and everyone else is encouraging you you're doubting some other example is let's say if they're commenting about your weight you know criticizing your weight you're so fat you're so ugly you saw this but if you're dating someone in the first place then why are you with them if you don't like what they look like i don't know if you get what i mean if you don't like what they look like do something like so if you're to if you try to if you want them to change then be with them throughout this change encourage them in a positive way and a healthy way not being rude and harsh number three this is rare but 
this is common of people who are just horrible people they treat their family like trash let me tell you something however much you have issues with your family friend with your family with your parents so your cousins or anyone that's family or relative you still have that bit of respect for them there's always that sort of small respect how much maybe your parents didn't maybe did something to you you always have that small bit of respect for them like hey those are my parents even if we don't get along by the end of the day they're my parents however anyone that does not have that in them treats their family like rubbish people are, you're shouting at your parents you're abusing your siblings you you're so rude to your parents and then you find yourself you find that they can't even hang out with with their family then there's, there's a big problem there how will how will you have a family with such a person like do you get do you feel me do you feel me <coughs> another example about that um is let's say you have you're working up country maybe you're working in masaka and then your parents are from masaka you're in masaka for two weeks you're sleeping in masaka that's where your parents live and you don't even spare a few minutes to go visit them seriously that's a problem number four treating anyone that you think is below you like trash my friends hmm? in most cases we try to defend these people you go to a restaurant and then your lady is treating the waitress like rubbish okay, excuse me bring that oh my god you don't deserve a tip oh my god you didn't study oh my god you know that kind of behavior and then because you're in love with them you're trying to defend them thinking no the waitress was being the waitress didn't bring what we wanted so maybe that's why she she got pissed like she got pissed off and had to tell the waitress off ah in a few weeks few months few years this person will be treating you the same way they are treating that waitress the same way they are treating that cleaner and you won't have any excuse because you you've been defending them for so long that you don't realize this is going to happen to you soon please watch out you're supposed to treat people kindly treat them well and respect everyone around you number five is if their presence scares you and what i mean by their presence scares you this is when you're dating someone and you get to a point whereby once you know they're coming home you start freaking out like oh my god or you hear the car hooting at the gate and your first instinct is to freak out like omg he's home we are finished he's home Oh my god oh she's home and then everyone is running to their rooms you're now worried oh my god is the cup where it's supposed to be is this where it's supposed to be is this you know that kind of like the presence freaks you out or if you're in a restaurant eating something with your friends and then he shows up you start shaking like oh my god what if he thinks i'm cheating on him with these people what if he thinks um you know that kind of you're not getting mentally disturbed Yo, that's some sort of you know high level depression you guys the person you're dating should be the person you go to for comfort for you know happiness for for love not for fear not not someone you should fear and quake at the thought of them or the sight of you know seeing their phone call or when you think like it should be someone you go to nice places with and you don't want to miss out this nice you don't want to you don't want to go to a nice place without this person i don't know if that makes sense yeah number six violence violence in any form be it physical be it emotional <coughs> be it psychological um be it any sort of violence like the minute you start seeing this person hit you like beat a lady you're not supposed to be beaten i know there's like violence for like against guys like male violence male yeah but men are also <coughs> violated um don't allow women to beat you up do not allow a guy to beat you up for what why is he beating you you get what i mean you're an adult like even if you're a kid you don't deserve to be beaten for for, for doing something that Violence is generally bad. <laughs> Beat man or woman, violence is a nay nay. Do not be violated. 
stand your ground and leave that relationship. Mental torture, mental depression, um, just because you're in this relationship, it's taking a toll on you and you're feeling it, you're scared of leaving this person. Sometimes it's okay to look for help, okay? Talk to people that you feel you can trust and get help with how you can leave this person. Number seven, the last one. And this is, this is the key, like this is the, the tip of the iceberg. The minute you realize the person you're dating is a control freak. At the beginning, you don't notice it because you're thinking, oh my God, my girl loves me. My guy loves me. Mm -hmm. Just because they're doing things like ordering for you what they feel you should eat at the restaurant. Yeah calling you every after five minutes thinking oh yeah yeah i'm in love i'm in love he loves me he's you know thinking about me then when you're out in the public he doesn't want you talking to certain people you know he's having your back you're thinking oh my god he has my back he doesn't want me talking to so many people peace that's the beginning of control freakness is that a word Bridget, what a word? i don't know can make it up <laughs> okay control freaky Control. control freak yeah control freak so the minute you start seeing that at the beginning like i said it's fun until you realize once you go to a restaurant somehow he shows up you're out with your friends like hey i'm out with my friends here and here so uh we'll meet you maybe tomorrow uh you're out with your guys dancing you look to your right and your your chick is there seated peeping like <laughs> probably peeping being awkward awkward things and then you get phone calls you may be uh in the shower the person is picking up your phone calls they want to know where you are they want to know your location at all times they are calling you 50 times a day you people who calls someone 50 times a day unless you have nothing to do the entire day i mean if you're a busy person you're working you don't have all this time at your disposal to call people the entire afternoon or the entire night and then they are calling everyone around you mm. yeah they're calling go. everyone around you like hey do you know where they are do you know what this person is they don't, they're trying to dictate what you should wear someone will tell you no i don't like those jeans change them to this i don't like that shoe you should be wearing this kind of thing p.s they are changing you indirectly but you don't notice it. They know you're a fan of jeans and then they're buying you long dresses. So each time they're buying you like a bunch of clothes, long dresses, huge sweaters, and you must wear them. If you don't wear them, then that's a problem. I got you this and you're not wearing it. And if you're a guy, they're buying you maybe certain kinds of shirts that are not your style. And then that's a problem if you don't wear the shirt. Then they are stalking your relatives, they are stalking your siblings, they are stalking your friends. They're, like it's now a whole stalking business. I think you have watched so many movies about this, like creepy creepy. I think it's an obsession, it's not even, it's not even love, it's not even lust, it's something obsessive. Once you feel that you are in such a relationship, please run for your life. Please do not fall prey to all these signs. Um, once you feel that you're getting into something like that, figure out a way to exit. If the person is not willing to listen and not willing to change and not willing to understand you, please live for your own sanity, for your own health, your own mental health and your own happiness. Okay? Keep in mind that you're loved, you're worthy and there's so many and there's, mm -hmm. and there's a greater love out there that and there's a greater love out there that's just for you that's just for you and waiting for you at the perfect time in god's timing thank you for watching